Hey guys, it's Shane here from Tank Hunter Miniatures, and today I'm finally getting around to doing a tier list video on Space Marine vehicles. <laughs> now, the way I've gone for rating these guys from E to S tier is you get a point if you cover a certain ability. So those points are, is it cost effective? How good does it look? Does it support other units? Is it strong? Does it have a single use or is it versatile? And what unique ability it has. So there are a few, quite a few um, S tiers in this. Um, very few sort of bottom tiers, but there are quite a bit of mediocre. Uh, so yeah, let's get into it. All right, now starting off, we're looking at the Storm Speeder Hail Strike, which is pretty good points for the amount of shots that you're getting out of this. It, this guy's a lot of shots. So that's pretty cost effective. And of course it's high toughness, high armor save. So yeah, this thing has value. Uh, looks wise, I don't like this. I don't like any of the Storm Speeders. Uh, they're just not as sleek as the old land speeders. They're trying to be a mix between a tank and a plane. It just doesn't work. It looks so dumb. So yeah, they're losing out. Pretty much the whole Storm Speeders losing out on that. Now it has its support ability that'll improve the armor pen for everything else that uh, shoots at a target it shoots at. So that's that's really good support. Um, and like I said, it's got a lot of shots, a lot of damage. Um, it is good. It is strong for what it does. It's not versatile though, because it only ever deals damage to basically infantry. This thing you can't really take out larger targets, heavily armored targets. It has its purpose. Uh, as for abilities, yeah, this thing can deep strike, it's fast. Like I said, the hail strike ability. So yeah, it's got that. So the Storm Speeder Hail Strike gets a solid B. That's pretty good for it. Okay, so now we're looking at the uh, Storm Speeder Thunder Strike. Uh, same details for the cost effectiveness and its looks. For this one, it does have a support ability where things it, uh, well, not things, it's just monsters or vehicles. So a very limited thing uh, that you fire at, uh, you add one to wound rolls for. But that's really pointless because this thing is supposed to be sort of anti-large. So you'd expect whatever it fires at to just shoot it off the board anyway. It, it shouldn't really be relying on helping someone else finish off its target. It it should be able to just finish off the target itself. So this is a really pointless model. I, I do not think it's worth bringing it all. Uh, yeah, with that in mind, yeah, this is a solid D. <laughs> do not bring this guy. So the last of the storm speed is, is the hammer strike. Now the hammer strike actually does a bit better with support uh, as things that it shoots at then loses the benefit of cover. That can be pretty good. Uh, it's got some longer range stuff, so if you if you're planning to just get in, shoot the melter destroyer at something close up, and then send the missiles out to sort of help something else. It's it's got the different ranges. You aren't primarily going to be firing at sort of one target with this guy, but you do sort of have limited shots, so it, it's a good support. It's not a great ability though. Um, so yeah, it does better than the, the thunder. So. This guy gets a C. All right, so now we're looking at the Hunter, one of my favorite tanks. Um, so yeah, these guys got a point decrease recently and they, so yeah, they're really cost effective um, to have these guys around. Uh, looks wise, I, I love them. I think they look cool as, cool as heck. Uh, support wise, no, neither the Stalker or the Hunter is really helping out other stuff. They're doing their own thing, but that's good. That keeps them strong. Uh, the other downside is they don't really have a versatility because the hunter is good at taking out like a big flyer unit, like one target. The hunter, uh, I mean the stalker, yeah, you, you're really good at taking out multiple sort of smaller flying forces. So they both have their niche. Um, as for their abilities, yeah, the Skyfire protocols, you know, Overwatch three different just you're raking the whole skies out of targets and the hunter with his ability to just make sure it's always hitting on a two it's just gonna target snipe it down lock it down and yeah really take out a target so 
Yeah, yeah, they both get a solid B. All right, guys, now we're looking at the Whirlwind. Uh, this is a classic Space Marine vehicle, really iconic, uh, something you can, a lot of people can recognize pretty well. Uh, so looks-wise, uh, it's really good cost-effective as two. This is a really good, well-rounded tank. Uh, support, yeah, you can fire this pretty much at any target, being that it can shoot out of sight. It's always going to be able to take out a priority. Uh, it's versatility. Now, it's got great strength, you know, with its, um, with its Vengeance Launcher. Does a lot of attacks, a lot of damage. It's going to be able to take out, I've seen it take out a lot of larger targets and smaller ones. Just with a sheer amount of firepower that it has. So, yeah, and being able to cause infantry to have the, the battle shock, that's great. So the Whirlwind is a straight up S tier. Yeah, it's probably one of the best Space Marine tanks you could bring, definitely. Go with the Whirlwind. Alright, so the Predator Destructor. Uh, your classic Predator build with its auto cannon. Uh, really strong this edition, the auto cannon. A uh, lot of shots, pretty, pretty good strength on it. You know, that's able to take out a lot of things. It is primarily good at taking out infantry, but you know, it'll do the job doing other stuff. Real good versatility, because of course you can take it with the las cannons or with the heavy bolters so yeah you can really kit this guy out to be able to take on almost any situation uh the only thing it loses on is just support it's sort of self-contained in itself so that still gets it at solid a tier for the classic space marine predator now when it comes to the predator annihilator uh pretty much the same thing as the as the destructor the main downside is this thing's only really good at hitting large targets, monsters or vehicles. That's really what it supports with its twin link las cannons and you're really better off fitting this thing out with las cannons and just focusing heavy on that. Uh, so it loses that uh, versatility the other one has. So it's just going to be about a B. Um, I will say special mention the, uh, the ball predator with its flamestorm or twin assault cannon uh yeah that would be a b as well because that's it, it just loses its versatility it's only really going to be taking out infantry at that stage but still b tier for annihilators and ball predators so now we're on to the uh, primaris tanks here with the gladiator lancer now the lancer pretty good cost on this guy as well yeah really strong uh, it has a great ability, so it can reroll the hit, wound, and damage roll. Pretty much whatever this thing shoots at, you know it's gonna, it, you know it's gonna take out. This is a very reliable, strong tank, very versatile, because it's got the the rocket pods, it's got the grenade launcher, storm bolters. Yeah, it's 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 equipped for everything. Um, so yeah, its main faults, of course, is it doesn't really support because it's pretty much on its own doing its own thing ah, the other things looks wise <laughs> yeah these things look so dumb um it's so just clunky and boxy it's i don't really know what they could have done to make them look better but all the gladiator tanks no that's a no <laughs> but uh not a bad choice to bring so that's gonna get a solid beat here yeah now, as for the reaper variant uh the anti-inventory only version of the gladiator so uh, just by saying that you know it loses its versatility store uh it's got really nothing that is, does anything more than one damage no real armor piercing so you're going to use this guy just to take out light infantry and you know its ability so it gets the sustained hits on infantry it's uh, kind of irrelevant it's already got a lot of shots that it, it doesn't really need that <laughs> It's either going to be overkill, yeah, or if, you know, if it wasn't enough to already get it, you're doing something wrong. So with that in mind, we're looking at the Reaper as a D tier. Now looking at the Gladiator Valiant. So, what's this guy got going on for him? So he's designed to be able to hit more accurate against the uh, monsters and vehicles it's close to. But is that really a problem? It's already hitting on threes most of the time anyway. Uh, it's only really got the, yeah, the twin las and the multi-melters, which 
are not that great at taking out bigger vehicles and monsters now. Like, this is supposed to be like an anti-tank, anti-large sort of build of this thing, but it can't get the job done nearly as well as, like, the Lancer could. So, yeah, this guy loses on almost every front. Yeah, this is, this is an E tier. The Valiant is just the worst loadout you can think of. I mean, the plus one to hit roll, what were they thinking? If it could get, like, re-rolling the damage or does minimum damage extra melt or something. But it's just, this is so unreliable and so swingy that, yeah, no, this isn't really going to be that effective. Um, so, yeah, E tier. Now, the Vindicator. Now, when I was talking about how iconic some Space Marine tanks look, uh, the Vindicator definitely stands out as that. Uh, it's greatly priced. It is one of the more expensive ones, but it is so worth it. <laughs> the Demolish Cannon will just, it'll take out everything. Infantry, heavy armor, it just doesn't have any limits aside. I mean, it's still 24 inch range, that's pretty good. And you want this guy to go up front because he's got a two up save, he's got the high toughness. And yeah, with the seed shield, he can get into combat. He can then still fire as if, as if he wasn't. Uh, the Vindicator is an S tier. It does everything because yeah, you can lock it in combat, you can take the hits for other things. Yeah, this guy's going to lead the way, and he's going to withstand, uh, yeah, one of the best Space Marine tanks you can bring, Vindicator. Now the Land Raider. Probably one of everyone's favorite Space Marine tanks. Um, yeah, there's not much you can say about this guy, but he is pretty pretty much the perfect tank for, for Space Marines. He's got the great amount of troops he can transport. Uh, he's got the good damage output with the heavy bolters, he's got the multi-melter, the, the las cannons, it's all pretty reliable and yeah he really assists with the assault ramp, so yeah the reliable land raider, that's an S tier as well, this guy doesn't really have any side effects um, and yeah still well costed in the base form, definitely worth it. Now the crusader has all the same good features of the land raider, uh, the only problem with the Land Raider Crusader is it loses its versatilities. Uh, all its weapons are pretty much keen on just being anti-infantry. Uh, and not really anti-armor infantry as well. You're just relying on just mass amount of shots. So it does lose a versatility score, so we're going to put that down to A tier. Now the Land Raider Redeemer has the same issues. Uh, the Flamestorm Cannon is really good. Uh, I've had some great results with that. Uh, the trouble is, again, it sort of, it does do a better job with the AP. Like, you're going to be taking out other sort of Space Marine type infantry. But of course, it being short range, yeah, it is strong. I still really like it. But again, it's just not as versatile as the base Land Raider. And this is the, actually the most expensive Land Raider. So if you were using it primarily as just a troop delivery system, the Flamestorm Cannon might be the wrong choice. Um, so for that, it sort of loses out on cost effectiveness. So this puts the Redeemer at a B tier, which is a shame, but it's still good. Like, it's still really good. But yeah, maybe just keep in mind, it's not always going to be as effective as maybe the other ones. Now the Repulsa is pretty much the, the Land Raider's younger brother. <laughs> um, yeah, it does pretty much the same things as the Land Raider does. It's got a good effective amount of shots. A lot of versatility you can bring with it. Uh, you know, high damage and low damage stuff. Uh, it's able to, yeah, really get your troops there safely. Um... Yeah, I mean, for being sort of the next generation Land Raider, the Repulsor is an S tier as well. It really doesn't have much faults to it. So, yeah, I mean, originally I didn't like the look, but that has actually grown on me quite a bit. So, yeah, I'd, I'd give the Repulsor an S tier. As for the execution of Varian, however, this one looks kind of silly. It's got too much stuff going on with a double turret that isn't, like it doesn't have symmetry there. 
Uh, I've just always had a problem with looking at that. Um, aside from that, it loses out on its ability uh, for the Executioner. And yeah, it just gets a hit a bit more accurate against units at a half strength. Is that really going to matter? You know, I think that's pretty weak. Uh, so the Executioner, I get to B tier. I think you're much better off using just the main repulsor uh, a lot more of the time. Looking now at the Rhino. Classic design, just your solid Space Marine transport vehicle. Uh, firstborn, of course. Um, yeah, no, this thing is great. It's got good toughness, good armor. It's got, you know, your firing deck. It's got good support. Uh, it can sort of fix itself. Yeah, a Rhino is really solid. Oh, and they're really good points-wise as well. The only thing lacking is the versatility because it doesn't really have like an offense it's just got its storm bolter but um yeah i mean you can't fault the rhino for that but yeah we'll give it an a tier rhinos are still very much what you want as for the razorback you know you take the rhino you take out a little bit of uh transport capacity you're losing the firing decks but you're getting that fire support ability so that is fire support is really good just letting things re-roll the wound. That is super strong. You can put some Devastators in there. Or some Stern Guard. And just, mm, you can do some damage with that. So the Razorback. And of course, yeah. Being able to bring the different varieties of damage. Like a Twin Laz Cannon. That's that's pretty reliable. Uh, the Assault Cannon. That can do good. So Razorback. That goes into S tier. You can't really go wrong with the Razorback. It's... Yeah, just even without it being a... Um, a, a transport it can still do damage just by being itself so yeah yeah definite eight, uh, S tier for Razorback now for the Primaris version of that the Impulsor the Impulsor is still pretty good um, again it suffers from the Primaris tanks downside of it, it doesn't look as cool um, a lot of people have been making fun of the Impulsor for a long time now and yeah it's fair enough um but it's still good it's like the firing deck that's pretty good support uh you know it's a great ability for it to have um you know you could also get it so it's giving the cp the um, sorry the cp the invulnerable save instead of taking the weapon uh but overall the weapons not that great um yeah you can take that missile raid that's probably the best one to take but yeah, that's pretty lacking, honestly. Um, yeah, the main thing that costs the Impulsor, its higher score, is it doesn't look great. It's not very uh, strong as well. But, um, you know, solid B. Can't, yeah, can't fault it for that. So that's pretty much everything that's current. So let's look at some legends. And uh, starting with the Land Raider Helios. Now, this guy stinks. Um, it's a land raider that's also an anti-flyer. And it's not a good anti-flyer, because it's supposed to be good against, yeah, your large sort of flying units, but it's not, it doesn't have any AP to it. It has AP1. So it's not even good at taking out large flying targets with only three shots. Uh, yeah, so this guy is weak. It's overcosted. Yeah, it's alright. It's a good support because it still has, you know, the assault ramp and, you know, it's got a good transport capacity. But yeah, you'd be crazy taking this over any other kind of les, uh, that Land Raider. So yeah, Land Raider Helios uh, D tier. Now the Demos Pattern Predator. This is an amazing Predator tank. Uh, it's so many cool weapon options. Uh, it's got really good ability. The arm spearhead. It has automatic rerolls built into its into what it does, as well as the reroll hits against objective markers. Yeah, these things are ah, oh, these things are great. <laughs> so much variety to them. So much high strength weaponry. Um, yeah, you can kit this out to do anything. Cannot speak highly enough. Um, again, it doesn't really support. It just does its own thing. So it is an A tier Demos Predator. One of the best predators. 
I'd suggest everyone use one. <laughs> now the Land Raider Prometheus. Now, this used to be a really good tank. Um, back when, yeah, the quad heavy bolters. Back when heavy bolters basically could shred anything. Anything large or smaller, it could just whittle down anything. But now, of course, heavy bolters, not that great at taking out bigger targets anymore. So that really hurts the Prometheus. As well as that, it lost its ability to ignore cover. That's originally when I used to field these. They had that ability, but that's long gone. So, yeah, it really is a shame. Um, I mean, heavy bolters are great, the twin-linked ones. Like, it's a lot of shots, but it's not as versatile as it used to be. Um, I think, it's, yeah, this thing is way overpriced as well, unfortunately. So, yeah, you're looking at this guy in a C tier. Oh, well. Now for the short-lived Rhino Primaris. Uh, this was a fun sort of HQ vehicle you used to be able to run. Uh, it's not really in a good shape. I think it looks it looks cool. It still looks cool. It's still costed pretty good. Uh, that's the thing. It's all about its support. Because, yeah, you just keep it around a bunch of stuff that you're going to be doing strats with. You know, it's going to gain the CP. So that's pretty nice. Um, and it's still an okay transport. But, yeah, the twin... Plasma gun, big deal. It's not really doing any damage, and yeah, its abilities are not that great. Being, they do support, but they're not that great. <laughs> so the Rhino, the Rhino uh, Primaris, ah, uh, yeah, that's a, that's a C tier. That's a that can that can stay gone. Now the Land Raider Excelsior, another short-lived Land Raider HQ model. Um, this thing is is great. Um, it can use the, the stratagem. So basically you can armor of content this guy for no CP every round. So that's crazy. Or anything else you want to do with it. It gets the free command point. Um, yeah, it's got the LAS cannon. It's got the colony weapon, the grav cannon. A lot of great stuff the Excelsior can do. Pretty good cost-wise as well. Um, the only thing it turns down is the appearance. This thing is, like, this thing is so ostentatious, it, it, like, it just goes too far. It's like, we get it, you're an ultramarine, we get it. It just goes a bit too far. <laughs> it's just too much. Um, so yeah, that, that, it's still, that's an A tier. And I'm sure to a lot of other people that might think it is an S, but for me it's A. But if you want to think of it as S, that's fine too. And now looking at the Terminus Ultra. The uh, Land Raider with too many LAS cannons. It's just silly how this thing looks. It's, yeah, too many LAS cannons just point out the side every direction. Every window's got a LAS cannon out of it. Um, you know, it's still pretty strong doesn't have really any abilities that make it worth standing out um aside from the fact that it can overload all its las cannons but of course then it becomes hazardous so you know you're giving it the ability to blow itself up so that's not great and of course um yeah being the low amount of shots now you know each of the big las cannons are only one shot a piece that's twin linked like, it's not a lot of shots, so you're primarily going to be shooting at big targets. You're not going to be doing, able to do much to smaller ones. So, it loses out on versatility as well. So, the Terminus Ultra, yeah, that's a C tier. Alright, so now we're on to the Heresy era sort of tanks you can bring in, uh, in 40k. Starting with the Kratos. It was so weird how when they brought this out and they said, yeah, you can bring it for both heresy and 40k that bought it rules and they said yeah everyone's gonna be able to use this for both and then instantly like as soon as the next edition kicked over which wasn't long after it was uh no actually you can't and i was like ah oh, okay it, i'll just go f myself <laughs> um but yeah looking at the kratos stats uh this thing is amazing um yeah a lot of different loadouts you can give it so, you know, the Volkite or Laz Cannons. There's a lot of shots as well. And of course, yeah, Line Breaker, you can 
get this thing straight up. It's going to support everyone. It's going to take the shots. Get straight stuck in. There's not really anything this guy can't handle. So yeah, Kratos is an S tier. Which, is, like I said, it's a shame because... Yeah, this is really good, what this can do. Oh well, um, yeah, I'd still bring it. I'd definitely recommend people still bring this. Now the Land Raider Proteus, yeah, pretty much the exact same stat line as the normal Land Raider. Plus with the extra ability, you can shorten how much transport capacity it has. So it has the uh, ability to deny reinforcements coming in within 12, so that's really good. That's that's a good ability you can put it on. So yeah, Land Raider Proteus, just as good as normal Land Raider, so that's S tier. Um, yeah, Proteus is the, really good. Like I said, it's just a better version of a Land Raider. Now for my unbiased opinion on my favorite Land Raider, the Achilles. Uh, this thing's great. It got its 4 involved back, which is insane. Um, so the Achilles, no weakness. Yeah, it's got its twin multi-melters, which are, you know, going to be pretty decent against larger targets. Uh, the quad launcher, great against infantry, and of course you can change that to be light infantry with the Thunderfire cannon or the shatter shells for, for like space marine type infantry. Um, yeah, yeah, you got that versatility. If you just want it to sort of rack up some wounds with the, with the, the Volkite, just get the devastating wounds on it. Great variety. Um, and yeah, it's the toughest land raider you can get with its involm. So, yeah. Land raider Achilles, that's an S tier. Just totally unbiased. It's just an S tier. So the Sicarian Battle Tank. So it's got a few good things going for it now. Uh, its ability, the armored spearhead, so it gets three rolls. That's good. Uh, the auto cannon. that's a pretty decent weapon. Um, like I said, it's not great at being anti-armor, anti-large, but yeah, it'll take out most things, a lot of shots, like pretty good strength and the three damage, you know, this is going to lay waste to a lot of things. Um, but aside from that, it doesn't have much going on for it. So it's got good versatility there, but you sort of, yeah, a bit, it's a bit on the weaker side, all things considered. Um, as for support, not really. As for looks, I have stated this plenty of times, this carrying is probably, it's probably my least favorite to look at tank. I, I hate it. I hate its triangle pattern. I hate how rear heavy it is. It's just, yeah, to look at that just, uh, gives me, just makes me upset how illogical this tank's design is. So, yeah, the Sicarian, we're just looking at a C tier. Uh, if you want to put it a bit higher, I'd understand, but for me, it's a, it's a C. So now looking at the various patterns of different Sicarians, uh, we look at one of the worst ones, the Arcus. Now, before when it had the Battle Cannon, it had, that's its pretty much its best feature. So take that away, give it the Multi Launcher, which is a much worse Whirlwind. Uh, it loses Blast, for some reason, it only does, so it only has 2d6, which is so swing of attacks, so the whole thing could just fire, you know, maybe 2, 3, 4 times, good chance. And it's only strength 6, 2 damage, but no AP, what is, what is the point? And, yeah, it ignores the penalty to hit, but it's only hitting on 3s anyway, ignores cover, but it's not going to do much damage. It's what is this supposed to be doing? It's yeah, I do not care for this at all. This is a bad choice. So Sicarian Ult, Arcus, yeah, that's a D. That's a D. Don't bring this. Next, we're looking at the Sicarian Venator, which is your big anti-large cannon. It's got a large cannon just straight down the middle of it, um, which is strong. Which is actually stronger than. Um, a lot of the other variants um the problem is its ability is stupid because yeah you'll get the the plus one to hit roll if it's the closest monster or vehicle but of course it's already heavy so it's like i could get up close to take advantage of that or i could just stay where i am 48 inches away 
and I'm hitting on twos anyway. It's so redundant. So, yeah, this back in D tier. This is a D weapon. It's just, yeah. So now we're looking at the Punisher with its giant, stupid looking gun from the arm sticking out of its back. <laughs> um, yeah, this is not that great a gun. Like I said, the, the rotary cannon, it's got a lot of. Like, it is strong against infantry that don't have armor. Um, the fact that it's only hitting on fours, so it loses its accuracy, just to get sustained hits one? It's like, why? So, no, this thing is... No, it's D tier as well. It's like so specific at doing a job, but then it also hinders itself at doing that job for reasons... Yeah, just... Just no, don't bring this. And thankfully the last Sicarian, the Omega, that's carrying two Titan plasma ray hands like from a war titan just sitting on its back uh its ability means you can get rerolls to hit and wound against your closest unit so again its big weapon is 36 inches range but to take advantage of the ability you have to get up close to something why are you getting this thing close up against a target like it's it's ah uh, it's no, it's just backwards. It's backwards ass. Um, and yeah, it's a strong weapon, but... Yeah, it, you just bring something else. The Omega, you don't need this. It's just silly. And it's also the... Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's one of the most expensive as well. Yeah, cost is a, cost is a negative. Yeah, um, you can do better. <laughs> Always do better than a Sicarian. Now, the Whirlwind Scorpius pretty good uh it's got all the good stuff that a whirlwind has uh the only thing is this is much more leaning towards being good at taking out the infantry uh it's very much more specialized which isn't a bad thing it's just yeah it's not quite as high strength um but yeah it's got a better ability to take out infantry than the whirlwind did so yeah it's still good it's getting an a just because it can't take on anything, it's just infantry that the Scorpius is good at, which, again, yeah, still good, A tier. So the Vindicator Laser Destroyer, uh, similar to the same thing we saw with the Scorpius, this guy is very much focused on taking out one sort of target. It's, it's just, it's a few shots that are just really good at taking out large vehicles and monsters. Uh, yeah, which isn't a bad thing. It is an Annihilator. It also can't shoot into combat like the other ones could. So this one, you're going to want to hold this back. It's not like the other Vindicator. You would let it come up and take the shots for other people. This one's, yeah, you're sitting at the back taking out choice targets of uh, basically the largest targets you can see. Uh, so the Vindicator Laser Destroyer, still really strong, still really good, but it's, it's just in B. It's not quite as reliable as the other one and now a fun one but uh not very effective is the the typhoon uh the typhoon is cool as heck this is a great looking model uh, with its giant siege cannon uh super strong like i said this will take out anything similar to it's yeah it's a vindicator on steroids uh it is one of the most expensive tanks in the game though <laughs> and um yeah, unlike the Vindicator, you do sort of want to keep this guy uh, a bit more out of combat. He doesn't have the same ability uh, with a Siege Shield. And yeah, he's just... His ability, you know, he increases the strength and damage against vehicles. But he's not really going to need that. He's already doing a lot of damage. So that's just a bit overkill. I don't think it needs that, you know... Basically, this thing can take out a Titan almost by itself, so... Yeah, the, uh, the ability is a bit off, just being a bit redundant. Um, so yeah, with its drawbacks, you know, you're only looking at a, looking at a C for the Typhon. Um, definitely a cool model, definitely strong, but not really cost effective. Now the Spartan. This is the, uh, this is the Land Raiders' bigger, older brother. Ah, the Spartan is great. Um, yeah, it's got some great damage dealing with the quad las cannons or the laser destroyers you know they're gonna wreck through 
pretty much everything. Um, you know, it still has the assault ramp, so you can charge out of it, but it has a lot more transport capacity. You can bring almost your entire army, put it into one spot, and, um, and yeah, it's just tough. It's, and it's actually really good point-wise. It's not that much more than a Land Raider. And considering, you know, points cost-wise, it sort of scales to a Land Raider. What a Land Raider has, scale it up, that's a Spartan. So the cost-effectiveness still goes into support. Uh, you gotta put a Spartan as S. It literally doesn't have any drawbacks. Um, so yeah, it, it, it's one of those surprising things. I don't really see it around that often, but yeah, Spartan is really good. All right, and lastly, we're looking at this Cerebrus. Uh, with its Neuron Pulse Array, uh, which is a big, big anti-tank gun built into it. So, if you look at the Typhon, you know, it's got this big cannon that, you know, act like a Vindicator. So, you know, you know, like the other Vindicator types we looked at, you got the Typhon and the Cerebus. So, Cerebus, yeah, less versatility. Yeah, it's, ah, its ability is dumb. It's if it remains stationary, it gets lethal hits. Big deal. <laughs> it's, it's already got enough strength. It's going to be doing something. It already hits pretty well. Um, so, yeah. I mean, looks-wise, it is cool. We do like it. It is strong. But has no versatility, no support. Its ability is pretty meh. And cost-wise, you know, you can bring stuff that's going to be about on par. Even better. Because you look at it, the, the Land Raid Achilles is the same price as the Cerebus. I'm pretty sure the, the Achilles could take this out alright. So, yeah, it's a bit overcosted. So overall, looking at the Cerebus as a D tier. Alright guys, so that's the whole list. Uh, as we can see, they have a good selection of S tier, A tier. Uh, it's really pretty varied. Just how... Yeah, the, the amount of range you can sort of take with these Space Marine tanks. Um, I wasn't quite expecting this many S tier, but yeah, no, they do all right. Um, like I said, A tier, they just don't have quite... They're just missing one little X factor. Um, and as for B tier, they're still good. They're just specialized. That's their main drawback, is they just do one job for other than the other ones that can do better. Uh, C tier, they sort of do one job, but they're either over-costed or not really getting the job done as well as other stuff. <laughs> D tier is, they're just, they've got too many setbacks, something's drawing them down. Either their purpose is irrelevant or they're over-costed. And then E tier is just, uh, just everything's wrong with that one. Someone just, I think they just needed numbers, so they just put that one there. <laughs> but, um, yeah, overall, a pretty good result. I think we're pretty set with uh, how the Space Marine tanks look. Um, but, yeah, let me know what you guys think. Uh, if you want me to do another one, um, yeah, I can definitely do another one in the future. But, yeah, thanks for watching. Uh, if you want to check out the other videos, that would really help me out. That would be great. Um, until then, thanks for watching again, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye!